So a few months ago, I did a teardown on a fancy ass fry cutter that I picked up. Uh, basically a piece of restaurant gear that I got that was in a woeful state of disrepair and I refurbished it and got it ready for use in the shop upstairs. Uh, tonight we have a similar teardown, uh, this time for a jar for my fancy ass blender, a Blendtec. I've had that unit for uh, nearly three and a half years and I've gotten plenty of use out of it in that time. In fact, there's a little uh, odometer on the front of the blender and it says I've used it nearly 1800 times in that three and a half years. <laughs> a lot of blending, right? Now, mine came with uh, two blending jars, both a big one that I mostly use for smoothies and the smaller one here that I mostly use for milkshakes. And by my best guess, I've probably used this to make about a thousand milkshakes. Uh, yes, I make more milkshakes than smoothies with my blender. Um, people think blenders are for, you know, health food only. No, 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 no. <laughs> milkshakes are where it's at. But anyway, I digress. Um, I got this thing and then about three months ago, it began making a very loud howling sound when it ran at high RPM. Uh, and the bearings felt a little bit, a little bit crunchy. And within another two or three weeks, I guess, they had seized up entirely and the thing was totally hoopa -jooped. So I hit up Bluntech on the warranty line and that was very, very simple. I just had to give them uh, like the serial number and the date I bought it and like what was wrong. And they went and sent me a uh, brand new replacement mini jar. So that could not have been easier. You know, some warranties, you gotta jump through hoops and crap and that was just very easy. Uh, There's basically no questions asked. So props to them for at least making that whole process easy. But I kept the other blender jar just in case I need it later on, you know, for parts or something else like that, right? And then you fast forward two months and lo and behold, I actually need a crappy blender for grinding up cat litter. Uh, Cause I wanna make green sand so I can cast aluminum in my kiln. Uh, and green sand, it's like a proportion of just regular silica sand and uh, Betonite clay or bentonite, some, some special sort of clay, uh, which is what cat litter is mostly comprised of. So, <laughs> want to grind up cat litter, don't want to do that in the uh, jar I use for making milkshakes because that'd be gross, you know? So I figured as long as I had this one here that was already beat up and mostly dead, uh, I would try and refurbish it and see if I can replace it, like get the, the bearing working again um, and maybe make that work. And if not, I could at least see uh, what the failure mode was, you know, and get some information just for curiosity's sake or possibly for repairing uh, this one when it goes bad. So I already knew from a video I'd seen before that these guys uh, can have the blades taken off of them because uh, the YouTuber uh, AVE, uh, Canadian Machinist, if you're watching my stuff, you've almost certainly seen one of his videos at some point. But uh, a couple years ago, he put out a video where he ground up rocks in his blind tech. Uh, and from that, he managed to extract a couple milligrams of gold. Uh, <laughs> you know, ridiculous. Anyway, so he ground up rocks, and a couple times in that process, uh, the blade on his uh, blender jar came loose. So I knew they could come undone. But uh, I spent probably 20 minutes, like, futzing and fiddling and fucking around with mine, and it could just not, uh, you know, loosen it up for the life of me. Even tried like the blowtorch just gently in there and no. <laughs> it was not going to come undone. Um, so I did uh, the other thing and just, you know, destructively, bam, took it apart. And now we can stack up here and see what exactly went wrong. Let's remove this too. This is part of that stack up. Basically, the problem is water ingress. Surprise, surprise, right? It got. Uh, this jar, you put a hole in the bottom, basically. You plug that hole with a bearing, then you fill the jar with water and try to keep water out of the bearing. You know, that, that'll work for so long, but only so long. And eventually that bearing will get super rusty and crusty, and then it'll just be totally, totally seized, all right? So you can see all the rust build up in there. You can see the, uh, the seals on that and how brown and like crunchy they got too. Um, yeah, that's what went wrong, despite of this whole stack up. So let's see. Uh, also, from having taken this apart now, I'm not sure if you can replace that bearing without at least destroying some part of the blending jar. Because uh, the stack up I've got here, the first thing that you saw was that uh, metal retaining disc, and then the first gasket. 
and that goes underneath this black piece of plastic, which appears to be uh, somehow permanently affixed to this blender uh, base. Now, they say in the Mercury Wank, like all over the place, that they ultrasonically weld the bearing in place. So I guess it's, you know, ultrasonically welded plastic there. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is you can't take the thing out without destroying it a little bit. Uh, and then I guess after you do that, you could possibly, um, you know, melt it back in place or simply glue it or something, find some other way to affix that bearing back in place. Um, but as, the, as far as you put it in there, you can't easily undo it. Uh, and then you'll also have to undo the nut that's on the top of the stack up. And this guy is simply very, very difficult to access when it is down in the bottom of that blending jar. So this is a uh, left-hand nut that would go on the stack up right above the blades here. And I can't exactly tell what thread size it is because I only have a few threads here to work with and measure my calipers, but it appears to be either uh, a 5 16 24 TPI left-hand thread, or maybe an 8 millimeter uh, by 8.25 millimeter pitch. Don't really know. One of the two, they're both very close, and I don't have any way of testing that to check. Uh, but basically, this thing was so friggin' tight that uh, the only way I can get it off was by coming with a hacksaw and just chopping it in two. <laughs> yeah, that worked, but uh, wouldn't really work if you still have it in the blender jar. Um, and then, yeah, wouldn't really work for replacing it later on. Um, now, if you take a careful, careful look at this, let's see if I can this up here and in focus. Oh, look, it worked. Wow. Uh, so there's all these marks on here from the vice grips I used that chewed it up. But you might also see those little marks up there at the top. And those were not me. Those were there already. So I think that was from whatever tool I used to install this thing. Basically come in and do the stack up from the bottom with all the gaskets and things, then come in from the top, drop on the blades, and then uh, have some way to hold the bottom of these splines here, which will go into the blending unit, and then some sort of tool that clamps on this nut very, very tightly, and then it turns it, uh, I guess, lefty tidy. These are left-hand threads. Uh, leaves those little indentations on there as the only sign that it was there, and then Take it out and it's, you know, good and done. Now, uh, let's see, what else do you got in the stack up? Basically, it's just a whole bunch of gaskets, right? You got uh, these, uh, the shaft with a couple of shoulders to help keep some of the rubber gaskets in place. The splines in the bottom that I have totally chewed up working in the bench vise here. Uh, this ring, again, that is in the base. Then there was one of these gaskets. Uh, then there's another gasket went around the shoulder here that I have already dropped on the floor and then that got uh, You know eaten by one of the black holes that opens up of the floor and steals small parts from you every time you drop them uh, <laughs> Anyway that then the bearing on top of that Can't really press it down all the way without a real press but bearing then this metal cap which had a little bit of other insulating stuff in there but it was this strange kind of plasticky spongy stuff that just disintegrated when I touched it and now it's gone forever uh, but there was something else underneath here and then that had let's see spacer on the inside this gasket over top too this gasket over top of that that went at the bottom of the base I guess underneath here which you can see broke out when I hammered it uh, then there was the blades, and then the blade, or the nut, on the very, very top. So yeah, all that gasket stuff, and you still can't keep the water out. <laughs> and I guess, you know, that, that does make sense, because, <sighs> again, you're putting a hole in the bottom of the jar, and filling it with water, and using the bearing to keep the water from coming at the bottom, and trying to keep water out of the bearing. It's just, it's not a winning situation. And you think about how many times I use this guy, you know, a thousand blends, and I was also pretty careful about um, always emptying it when I was done using it, you know, not leaving stuff in there for very long, you know, not leaving anything in the fridge in the blending jar overnight, uh, rinsing it out and always letting it dry upside down so moisture would go down as opposed to seeping up into the bearing. Um, so with a thousand blends, maybe call it five minutes of wet time per blend. So 5,000 minutes, roughly 1,500 minutes in a day. So three days and change. Um, and that was all it took to get the bearing 
uh, you know, this, uh, this buggered. So, yeah. Kind of wish they gave the whole thing uh, an assembly that was designed to make it easier to replace, right? Like this nut could have been an acorn nut, right? Something with a hex body that you could then come in with, you know, a uh, long extension T handle and then manage to still undo that, right? Um, they could have made the spline something easier to get onto with a wrench as well. Didn't need to be this weird proprietary spline. And they could have just made it you know, in such a way that you could replace the bearing over and over again and then have this thing last a lifetime. Then again, I guess for them as a business, when they're selling a premium blender that costs a good bit of money and comes with a seven year warranty, and when the majority of their clients don't have the or at least they're assuming, and probably accurately so, the majority of the clients don't have the mechanical skill to replace a seized bearing. It is just easier both for them and for their clients to um, simply get a whole new blending jar whenever this one bites the dust. But, you know, just doing it that way, it just it makes it become landfiller, right? It goes to the landfill, sits there for 50 billion years, or uh, 12 years, depending on who you ask. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, I'm just, I just don't like that, right? It's, it's a small piece of trash, but, uh, you know, reduce, reuse, repair, recycle. People often miss repair, and that, that's one that I'm really big on, you know, being basically a DIY addict. But, um, yeah, they made it in such a way that you really can't do that. I guess that's, that's the end of it. So I would definitely recommend that if you got a Blendtec uh, and you're anywhere near the end of that seven-year warranty and you can feel any semblance of crunchiness in your bearings that you call up Blendtec and tell them you want new blending jars because when the warranty ends you're basically SOL. They charge like 120 bucks for these things. <laughs> they are not cheap. Uh, in fact they charge you enough to warrant them giving you at least one or two replacements because yeah uh, with two of these in the pack I bought That'd be 240 bucks. That's more than half of what I paid for the package as a whole. And by that point, you may as well just buy a whole new package, right? Get a brand new, uh, another seven year warranty on top of that. And I guess, you know, that's, that's the culture we work with now. Unfortunately, so, I guess. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, this bearing too, I'll point out, is this a skateboard bearing, the standard 608, uh, like this guy here. The bearing that's ubiquitous and used in absolutely everything. Everything is a six of weight bearings all over the place. Just because economies of scale make it very, you know, very efficient and very cheap to use. Now, uh, this one here is a generic Chinese one. That's like 25 cents a pop on eBay. Definitely a craptacular bearing would not last very long in this application either. Uh, this one here is slightly nicer. Um, I was able to just barely make out on one of the seals that it said NMB. I looked it up, it's a bearing brand, uh, made in Thailand, um, and going on eBay and checking pricing for this, this is typically a $5 bearing if you buy them in a one-off, or a $1 bearing if you buy in bulk, and if you buy them in manufacturer quantity bulk, like a thousand at a time, then it's probably even cheaper than that. But uh, yeah, it's a decent bearing, nothing crazy fancy, but at least nicer than the, um, you know, absolutely craptacular unbranded Chinese ones. Uh, anyway, yeah, I think that, uh, that's enough for this. I'm going to make a milkshake. Y'all have a good night.